just a moment. So you can see my slides at the moment, right? Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, for 15 minutes, I will try to talk about my presentation. The title of my presentation is um, the, just a moment, yes. The title of my presentation is the image of Bayraktar Tart TB2 drones in Western media as a luster for Turkish foreign policy. Uh, first of all, uh, what I wanted to do in this uh, study was to uh, have a look at the media representation of Bayraktar drones uh, in the aftermath of Russia-Ukraine Russia war, which broke out on February 2024 20, uh, this year. Uh, what I aimed in this study was to shed light on the impact of national defense industry, industry's image uh, of, on Turkish foreign policy. Uh, while doing this, I uh, tried to benefit from the theoretical framework of uh, um, linguist, linguistic studies scholar Van Dijk. According to Van Dyke, media discourse is uh, is very important to reproduce and also challenge the ideologies. And um, I argued that also the media discourse can also change the perception of a state in foreign policy uh, in in a country's foreign policy. Um, it is known that Bayraktar TB2 drones were heavily used in military operations against PKK uh, terrorists. Uh, Turkish drones, which have recently been exported to many countries in the world, also have been used uh, actively in the Russia by Ukraine uh, military forces in Russia-Ukraine uh, war. The song Bayraktar, which tells about the Bayraktar drones, became popular among the Ukrainian soldiers. And uh, after the outbreak of the war, and after Ukraine, you know, bought these uh, weapons, uh, the drones, um, uh, there were some media uh, images of uh, Selçuk Bayraktar, the uh, the per the uh, the CEO of the company of uh, pro producing Bayraktar drones. So I tried to look at some of the interviews and also some of the articles, but it was not very scientifically selected, as I couldn't, you know, use the. Uh, uh, statistical tools. I just tried to make a Google search about the random keywords like Google Bayraktar, but such Bayraktar or drones. Then I just tried to analyze some of the articles published after Russia, Ukraine, Russia and Ukraine war. First of all, uh, I want to talk briefly about the historical uh, background of Turkish defense industry. I took, I mainly took this uh, information from the website of. A Turkish Defense uh, Authority. Uh, we know that Turkish defense industry is today is able to manufacture national and local products uh, according to the government discourse, of course. Uh, uh, how much national and local? Uh, yes, we. I think we produce some of them. Also, we use the other foreign parts, of course. Uh, Tubitak is an important organization in in the research of these uh, weapons. Turkey's growing weapons defense industry is a cornerstone of Erdogan's independent foreign policy for two reasons. Uh, first of all, the Russian S-400 S, missile system. Um, uh, this was a you know, discussion in the previous uh, month. Uh, I don't want to talk much about them, of course. But Turkey has started to pursue a different kind of foreign policy approach in recent years. Also, in 2010, Turkey had one company on the list of top 100 global defense companies. Presently, it has seven uh, companies, more companies than Israel, Russia, Sweden, and Japan combined, according to Gruni, Gruni's uh, work. I took this from a, a popular magazine, I think. Uh, he also, uh, the history, uh, as if I am to continue, the history of defense industry, the, Presidency of Defense Industries was affiliated to the Presidency of Republic in late 2017. Uh, historically, in the um, there was no defense industry infrastructure during the first years of the Republic. Uh, the first major initiative in the aviation industry was the formation of an aircraft facility in Ankara in one in 1941. Uh, so in 1970s, there was an era when solid initiatives were put into force as to, for establishing national defense industry. Armed forces was established, although the foundation formed 
enterprises such as Asesan, Aspisan, thanks to the donations, it was soon realized that the actual need for contemporary defense industry couldn't be met through the foundation alone. Uh, during the 1980s, the state initiative was undertaken to realize the modernization of the Turkish armed forces uh, and the establishment of a national uh, national tech in that defense industry based on the contemporary technology was determined as the primary goal. Um, the the law uh, 3238, which was uh, put into force in 1985, was an important development uh, in the direction of you know establishing defense equipment directorate. Um, also, I want to summarize because I have 10 minutes, I think. Uh, the 2009 economic crisis was an, also another important uh, development. After 2006, important uh, steps were taken uh, for supporting uh, defense industry. In the ninth development plan, uh, uh, published in 2006, um, developing production and structure that is competitive, self-sufficient, flexible, and integrated with the country's industry was witnessed. Uh, today, uh, the defense and aerospace aviation sector worth uh, $1.3 billion. Uh, it reached to more uh, like $6 billion. Uh, the research and development expenditures uh, became, uh, became very high, uh, high in the last years. So basically, I can talk about the history of defense industry in that way. Um, uh, I can say that there is an important increase in the share allocated for research and development. I want to also talk a little bit about the Bayraktar TB drones. Bayraktar TB2, sorry, TB2 drones is a medium altitude long endurance unmanned combat aerial vehicle capable of remotely controlled or autonomous flight operations. It is manufactured by Baykar Makina. Uh, the son-in-law of President Erdogan uh, for the Turkish Armed Forces. Its first flight was held in uh, 2014. Turkish-made uh, Bayraktar drone is around seven times lighter than its UK counterpart, the Ripper drone. Um, according to the information, information presented in the official webpage of Baykar Technology, baykartech.com, since uh, for, uh, for almost eight years, uh, uh, Baykar carry, has been carrying out missions successfully within the Turkish Armed Forces, National Police, and other uh, state uh, uh, security forces. Um, by 2020, the type flew more than 100,000 hours. This was a record for Turkish aviation industry. This attack drone was exported to Ukraine, and in 2018, Ukraine ordered a total of six drones and three control stations. Also, um, Bayraktar drones were widely used by Azerbaijan against Armenian targets. In 2021, another contract was signed between Turkey and Ukraine. Uh, the Bayraktar drones proved to be an extremely effective uh, unmanned uh, airspace combating vehicle, uh, IHA in Turkish uh, um, um, abbreviation, I think, and had significant achievements during military conflicts. Um, uh, so I want to talk as the um, Van Dyke's approach as critical, the critical discourse analysis method as the you know the both the methodological tool and also uh, some sort of a theoretical tool also discourse uh, critical discourse analysis can also be used as a theory theory of a study. Uh, so according to Dyke, discourse plays a major role in the expression and reproduction of ideologies. Uh, also, Fowler is an important scholar. Uh, for Fowler, uh, newspapers are not neutral and they depict different events based on their own political ideologies. Here, I give a detailed uh, summary about Van Dyke's socio-cognitive model for critical discourse analysis. Uh, I, uh, but I'm not going to talk much about it. But briefly, I can say that according to Van Dyke, uh, in the discourses, we emphasize positive things about the in-group. The in-group is us, uh, the representation of us, and emphasize negative things about the out-group. So the um, negative uh, labels are attached to the other group uh, in, in the discourses. Generally, of course, this is not a you know, valid rule for all, all the discourses. Uh, as I said, I wanted to, to look at the, um, the 
image of Bayraktar drones, especially in the aftermath of the Russia-Ukraine war. So I also briefly touched uh, on the uh, on this war. Uh, this um, a brief overview I want to provide at the moment. Russia invaded Ukraine on February 24, uh, but its forces have by April 24 fully withdrawn from around the capital. Um, Putin said the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, constitutes a threat to Russia's national security. So uh, also we know that the United States and other uh, actors accused Russia of planning to attack or invade Ukraine. Uh, briefly, I can say about this. The usage of Bayraktar drones in Russian-Ukraine war. Uh, uh, Bayraktar TB2 drones proved to be extremely effective in the war between Russia and Ukraine. Ankara has uh, sold dozens of uh, its combat drones, it, dozens of it, uh, its combat drones to Ukraine since uh, 2019. Uh, Bayraktar drones, specifically by banning exports of the Westcam uh, electro-optical cameras made in Canada, and uh, there are some technical terms. Uh, anyway, shortly, uh, I want to also make a brief citation to re researcher uh, Mora Gilly, Gilly. He says that TB2 Bayraktar uh, produced by, TB2 drones produced by Bayraktar is one of the two prominent armed drones produced by Turkey. It is cheaper than other Western models, but it has a good performance in, in key parameters like range, altitude, as well as sensors and communication system. So this researcher uh, says like this about Bayraktar's. Uh, here there is a there is a, an image of Bayraktar drones. I took this from on associated press, I think, uh, length like 6.5 meters long and other things. Uh, according, the, in fact, the main um, part of the uh, study is this, but it's at, in the end, so I'm going to reshape and restructure this study uh, later. Over the last few weeks, several video clips have emerged on the internet showing Bayraktar drones destroying Russian tanks. And also, according to Deutsche Welle, Ukraine has had uh, drones since 2009 and has purchased around 50 over the past three years. According to a report by Time, Russia's advance has been slowed due to Ukraine's drone campaign and is revealing weaknesses on the part of the Russian army. Um, so uh, there is a song uploaded on YouTube where Ukrainians have composed a folk song uh, about the drones. Its English translation is this: uh, The invaders came to you, came to us in Ukraine. The uniforms, new military chain, but their inventory melted in part by Raktar, by Raktar. So this was a song also uh, performed by the soldiers. Uh, yes, two minutes. Okay, uh, performed by the soldiers, uh, Ukrainian soldiers. Uh, by Raktar became the symbol of resistance for the Ukrainian people. Also, another important um, issue that I must talk about in the, me uh, the media image of Bayraktar in Western media, CNN International made an interview with Selçuk Bayraktar on April 8th. Uh, they stated that Bayraktar drones are a symbol in resistance of the Ukraine. Also, Selçuk Bayraktar said that I think a TB2 drone is one of the symbols of resistance and gives them hope. This interview was... Uh, uh, broadcasted on the YouTube channel of CNN International, and it reached to, uh, to more than 2,000 clicks in two hours. Uh, also, in the article, another Western media, uh, Time magazine again, it said that the images released by the Ukrainian army are surprising to many observers. It shows serious flaws of Russian air defense. The images are also very useful for public relations and psychological wa warfare. Um, Aaron Stein, research director at the Foreign Policy Research Institute in the US, said that the videos got people excited showing the TB2 drones because they show an air rate in high definition. Uh, so the, these images can also be as a, as a propaganda. As concluding remarks, I try to talk about the use of Bayraktar drones. And uh, uh, according to CNN reporting, uh, this, the media image of these drones contributes uh, um, contributes to the positive outlook of Turkish foreign policy. I also uh, I also uh, uh, agree with this, and thank you very much for the opportunity.